by Ford and the Ford dealers of your community, who tonight bring you Lorraine Day and Francia Tome in Too Old for Dark with Natalie Wood. Hi. Hi. Oh, Polly, right now while I think of it, I want you to take that big box of toys in your closet and put it out on the back porch. Why? Because the church is going to pick it up tomorrow. Mother, you didn't give all my things away, did you? Polly, we've been in this house over three months and you haven't unpacked one thing from that box. You're too old for dolls and it's a pity to let them just rot away when someone could be enjoying them. So please do it right now and get it over with. Oh, Mother. What's the matter, Polly? Oh, nothing. Anyway, nothing that a mouthful of thumb will cure. Now then, young lady, what is it? Nothing that anything will cure. Oh, it's really that serious. Well, just look at me. No temperature, no spots, no broken bones, no nothing. You're so right, no nothing. Oh, Mother, there just isn't anybody. I haven't got anybody. There just isn't anybody left to take me to the dance. Oh, there's going to be a school dance. A formal, in two weeks. And being a new girl in town, I only know a couple of men. Besides, all my men were taken up long ago. All your men? Well, they weren't exactly my men. Going to a girl's school, I don't need any. <sighs> Dear, I thought your problem was you needed a new light for your bicycle. Oh, Mother, this is serious. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, honey. You'll have a date. I promise. Who? Oh, I don't know. There's a whole world full of nice young boys. I'll speak to your father about it. Mother, could you get someone taller than me, please? He'll be a prince. Oh, oh what a load off my mind. I thought I'd go crazy for a while. Where are you going? For a ride on my bike, down to the point. Well, you better get home early. Your father's barbecuing the dinner. And you know how much work that means for us. OK, I'll be home early. Marge! Marge, you can bring out those steaks now. They're marinating in that bowl on the kitchen sink. Oh, and Marge, add a little dry mustard and stir it in, will you please? Marge? Yes. Oh, and Marge, crumple up a bay leaf over them too, will you please? Marge! are getting tired, Daddy. Well, that's fine for now. What did you do today? Oh, nothing much. Oh, we went down to the point. And you know that big old house they have up there? They're really remodeling it. Even the garden. And they let me ride the tractor. Now, you be careful. Oh, Marge! Yes? Oh. Oh, put them down over here. And you sit down. This is my party. Thank you, Thay. You're so good to me. You better fan that a little, Polly. I wish you two would come down to the point with me sometime. Honestly, it's just like the point back home. Hmm. Needs just a touch more lemon. Now, you sit down. Polly, you get me a lemon, will you please? Okay. Did you say anything to her? No, she didn't mention it, so neither did I. But honey, the few people we know only have daughters. So maybe we'll meet somebody at the Barkers tonight who's Proud parent of a gangling youth. I hope so. Anyway, let's just not make a problem of it, shall we? Oh, Polly, stop that nibbling. You know we've got to get you into an evening dress. An evening dress? There's going to be a formal dance at school next week. A formal? Well, Mother, it looks as though someone's going to be needing a new gown. I haven't even got a date yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, Polly.
name. Who is the most popular girl in your class? Betty Mae Clark. She's dripping with boyfriends. And she's very glamorous. She is? Well, I suggest you just stick close to Betty Mae. She's got to shed some of them. She can't take them all to the dance. Mike, you just act your own sweet self, honey, and you'll do fine. I don't know. Things are looking pretty black now. Well, things are going to brighten up. You better get those steaks on, Cook. We're due at the Barker's in an hour and a half. <clears throat> How do you like our little town so far, Mr. Ramsey? Oh, we love it. It's a great place to live. You know, my Betty May is in the same class as your girl, Polly. Is she? Mm -hmm. Betty May. Oh, Betty May Clark, the glamorous one. Well, she thinks she's pretty glamorous, all right. You know, we live so close, Mrs. Clark. I hope the girls become very good friends. I hope so, too. Mrs. Clark, I'm, uh, I'm quite a hand at the barbecue pit. Why don't you and your family come over Sunday for dinner? Well, very, very nice of you, Mr. Ramsey. Oh, this will please Mr. Clark, so... You see, Betty May is a little too preoccupied with boys right now. We've been trying to find a nice girlfriend for her. They're so important, you know. Yes, yes. Girlfriends are important, too. Boys? You have boys? And all of them terrors. All of them? How many do you have? There are 12 in my pack. Pack? Oh, you mean Boy Scouts. No, I work with the Cub Scouts. Cub Scouts? Well, they're the little ones. Mm -hmm. Nine and ten. That is little. My own boy is an Eagle Scout. How old do Eagle Scouts come? Kippy's going on 15. 15? <laughs> Mrs. Raymond, you, you just don't know how much I admire the work you're doing. And if at any time you need any assistance, please don't hesitate to call on me. I'll take you up on that right now. I'm making Indian costumes for their little show, and frankly, I'm not much of a seamstress. Well, I saw a pretty fine seam. Why don't we do it on Saturday when my daughter Polly could help? She's 15, the same age as your son Kippy. They really should get together. We'll have some lemonade as soon as Kippy comes home. His ball club is playing this afternoon. It's the last game of the season. Kippy's their champion shortstop. Well, they certainly have a wonderful day for it. Oh, they're pouring the cement for the pier down at the point today. Are they building a pier? Mm hmm And they're fixing up the old house up there. It's just going to be beautiful. That sounds like my champion now. This is my Kippy. Kippy, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Ramsey and her lovely daughter, Polly. Hello, Kippy. Hi. Hi. How'd the game go, Sonny? Okay, I guess. We won. Oh, wonderful. Now I'll get the lemonade and we'll toast the champion. I'll help you, Mom. All right, Sonny. Excuse us. He seems like a very nice boy. What there is of him. Polly. Mother, he'd barely reach my chin. Well, he's the champion shortstop. Well, he's the shortest champion shortstop I ever saw. Then you aren't going to ask him? Ask him? Why, Mother, the girls would think I was babysitting and brought it to the dance. Okay, one down. But we still have your father's Operation Betty Mae Clark on Sunday. There you are, Mr. Clark. Oh, Thank Marge, you. bring out that big potholder, will you please? We had to meet some friends of my mother's yesterday, so I missed the pouring of the cement for the pier. The first thing this morning, I rode my bike down to the point. And, oh, gee, Betty Mae, it's just going to be great. A pier? Will they have a yacht? I don't know, I guess. Oh, how wonderful. How about it, girls? You want to help me out? Oh, I'd love to. It's delicious. Polly, I think your father's just dreamy. You do? You have a perfectly wonderful cook, Mr. Ramsey. I think it's great for a man to be able to cook. I bet Mrs. Ramsey appreciates it. Hey, this is my husband you're flirting with, young lady. <laughs> Here, Mike. You want to put this someplace where it'll keep warm? Right. You all set for the dance, Betty Mae? Oh, that old thing. I wish you were over. 
Oh, what's the matter? Well, to tell you the truth, I've been going steady with two boys. Really, three. Because of this silly old dance, I'm going to be found out. Because I can't invite them all, can I? I don't care anyway. I've got a new boyfriend. Aren't you going to ask Charlie Hastings? Oh, that big ox. I should say not. I'm through with football players. Well, why don't you invite him, Polly? You always liked him. Oh, Charlie's a nice guy. But I've already got a date. Oh? Who'd you ask? Al. You don't know him. What's he like? Is he cute? Well, I'd say he was more handsome than cute. He's tall and dark, and he's got black curly hair. I think he's some sort of an Arabian prince. Oh, no. What is all this? Who the heck is Al? Al, Algernon. I could just kill her. Poor little thing, but I could just kill her. Algernon? Al, Algy, Algernon. The make-believe playmate she had as a child. It's in her mind. Why, when she had a chance, why didn't she grab up Betty May's old boyfriend? How oh, she didn't accept Betty May's discard, but she didn't have to go this far. Well, let's not make a problem out of it, please. Make a problem? Mr. Ramsey, what do you consider the task ahead of us is? Now we not only have to find her a date, his name must be Al, he must be tall, more handsome than cute with dark curly hair and be an Arabian prince or something. Well, don't worry. Thanks, husband. Woman, in China, when a wife presents her husband with a girl child, she is quickly replaced. So consider yourself lucky. Mister, I sure do. Honestly, I feel so sorry for Polly. I, I don't know what to say to her. Well, I suggest saying nothing. Embarrass her. But, Mike, she mustn't go around telling people that childish fairy tale about bringing Prince Al to the dance. Well, I don't think she will. She had to come up with something last night to compete with Betty May. Arj, I think if we forget about it, our little daughter will be very glad to do likewise. Maybe. And I promise to take care of the date department, even if I have to go to an escort bureau. Mike, that's a wonderful idea. Mother. But you promise. I promise. Bye-bye. Bye. Work hard. Yeah. So long. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, Polly. Good morning, Mother. Good morning. Polly, you don't have to worry about anything. Everything's taken care of. Your father's promised, and he's an honest man. Mother, what are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing at all. I just wanted you to know that you can relax because your father has the situation well in hand. I'd like you to send out an inter-office memo, Miss Peck, from the office of Michael Ramsey to office boys. Office boys? Office boys, all departments, ages 16 to 18. Kindly furnish this office with the following information. A, your height. B, do you dance? C, do you own a dinner jacket? D, are you available Saturday night? Is that all, Mr. Ramsey? Yes, yes, that'll be all. Thank you, Miss Peck. <laughs> oh, Miss Peck. When we get the information from the boys, will you please compile a report on the findings? Very good, sir. Out of the 11 office boys in the building, nine replied. Here is a list of their individual heights. Thank you. All answered yes to question B, do you dance? To question C, do you own a dinner jacket? Five answered yes, three no, and one question mark. To question D, are you available Saturday night? Four yeses and five noes. Of the four yeses, two own dinner jackets, so that narrows it down to two eligible boys. Here are their names, ages, and social security numbers. Will that be all? Yes. Yes, that'll be all. Thank you, Miss Peck. Oh, Miss Peck, will you please have these two boys come by to see me at their earliest convenience? Very good, sir. You're uh, 19, Walt. Now, going on 20. How old did you say your girl was, Mr. Ramsey? Fifteen. 
15, huh? Well, that's pretty young. Oh, I don't think age has much to do with it nowadays. They seem pretty grown up today at 15. Yeah, you're right there. You know, last summer I went out with this gal. She was only 13, mind you. Man, I had a hard time keeping up with her. And I know my way around. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Well, thanks for coming by, Walt. But uh, what about the date? Well, Walt, I think Polly's a little young for you. But I like them young and fresh. Yeah, so do I. That's why I'm going to try to keep her that way. Thanks again, Walt. <laughs> Sounds like a wonderful evening, Mr. Ramsey. And if she's your daughter, I'm sure she's a perfectly charming girl. Um, Mr. Ramsey, I, uh, I've been with the firm for over a year now. I love it here. I work hard, but I, I just don't seem to be getting any place. I'm still in the shipping department. And advertising's my line. Oh? Yes, sir. I'd be a crackerjack ad man. I know it sounds a little conceited, I guess, but... I'm being wasted in the shipping department. You think you could help me out, Mr. Ramsey? Well, I could call you to the attention of Mr. Granger, the head of our advertising department. Well, I've already had a couple of talks with him, sir. I, uh... I... Well, maybe, uh... Well, you know I'd be only too glad to uh, go out of my way to escort your little daughter to her little dance, and I, uh... I thought maybe, uh, you tell your daughter, sir, that I mambo, I samba, I waltz, I foxtrot. And I'm still in the shipping department. Oh, I already said that, didn't I? Well, goodbye, Mr. Ramsey. Maybe I'll be hearing from you. <laughs> Blackmail at 17. <laughs> Easy does it, huh? It's just that they're a little new and stiff. Oops, I told you, you those heels were too high. No, Mother, they're perfect, really. It's just that they're new. So are you, darling. Brand new. Hi. Hi. Hmm, drunk again. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Did I buy those pink stilts? Yes, you did, Father. And you should see the beautiful pink dress you bought to go with them. We're all set. Uh, darling, take those off and set the table. Well, I can set the table in these. Not carrying my china, you can't. Now run along. Okay. Something smells good. What's for dinner? Mike, did you find someone? Marge, it's only Monday. Well, at the rate we're going, we should have put an ad in the paper six months ago. Say! No! Absolutely no! Well, he has to come from some place. Mike. Mike, what about the office boys in your building? Now, there's a thought. And a darn good one. Down, Marge. I talked to all of them today. You did? And you couldn't even interest one? Oh, I could get one, all right. A real smooth operator. Yeah, he's tall, dark, and handsome. He sambas, he mambos. And he tried to hold me up for a promotion. Well, give it to him. Marge, you know it's against my principles. Oh, hang your principles. Just think of that poor little child upstairs wobbling around in those new pink shoes, dreaming of the boy who's going to step on them. I'll take her. You? My father took my sister to her first cotillion. It was considered a very special honor. Oh, Mike, that was long ago. Well, long ago or not, it's a very nice custom, and Polly and I will revive it. You promised. All right, I'll accept his terms. Polly! Polly! What is it? Oh, Polly, come on. Everything's all right. You've got a date for the dance. Mother, what are you talking about? Oh, darling, I'm so happy for you. And he's, he's tall, dark, and he mumbles, and... Well, your father says Ed's a regular prince. Mother, I told you all that. And his name isn't Ed, it's Al. Al? Al? Al, I told you Sunday I asked Al to the dance. But Marge, you said... You... Well, I, I thought... What's the matter with you two? Well, your mother thought that Al was... Well, Algernon, you know, your make-believe Algernon. Oh, that you made Mother, a... really? Do you mean to tell me for the last week I devoted my life to a non-existent cause? 
Just a minute, Miss Ramsey. Just who is this Al? I met him down at the point. He drives the tra tractor, and his name's Al something or other. I never did get it straight. Well, you just get this straight right now. You're not going to the party with some strange tractor driver, that's for certain. But, Daddy, I've already asked him. Well, then you'll just have to unask him, dear. I'm sorry, we don't mean to hurt the fellow's feelings, but you can't go out with someone we don't know. Especially when you don't even know his last name. I know his last name, but he's foreign and he speaks kind of funny. And I just can't pronounce it. No, Polly, I don't like the sound of any of this. And your father's gone to a great deal of trouble to find a nice young man for you. He's not exactly the all-American boy, but I'm sure you'll be very happy with him. I happen to be very happy with the date I picked for myself. This is not the Dark Ages, Father. I'll go with the date I choose or I won't go at all. I don't believe it. Now she's not going because there are too many boys. Marge, will you sit down? You're making me nervous. Well, I'm glad something is. The idea of letting your only child go out with a perfect stranger should be curdling your blood. And you just sit there. My dear, I have to tell you that sending that little blackmailer back to the shipping room was worth any price. Fine way for a father to talk. If we don't like the looks of this, Al, I'll drive them to the dance and pick them up afterwards. So relax, please. Here she comes. Sit down. Oh, Mr. Dunn, I'm Polly, you look lovely. Why, thank you, Mother. Well, Daddy, do you like it? It's beautiful. You're beautiful. Just the dress. Oh, he's early. I'll answer the door. Good evening, madame. Is this the home of Miss Pauline Ramsey? Yes. Are you Mrs. Ramsey? Yes. May I present His Highness Prince Ali Mohammed Aziz. It's easy pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Ramsey. Al. Hi, Al. Hi. Gee, you look swell. These are for you. Oh, thank you. They're just beautiful. Come on in a minute. I'd like you to meet my father. I will wait in the car. What a beautiful car. He belongs to my government. Father, I'd like you to meet Al. Well, how do you do? Good evening, sir. Polly tells us you're living at the house down on the point. Yes, sir. My government is leased it. It has been restored and enlarged. My parents arrive next week. Uh, meanwhile, my tutor and I have been studying the remodeling. Remarkable, the American ingenuity. You will please come to see it and to meet my parents next week. Uh, yes, yes, we'd, we'd love to, wouldn't we, Marsh? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, is your father with the government? He is with the Economic and Social Security Council of the United Nations. Oh, how nice. Yes. Come on, Al, let's go. Good night, Mother. Good night, darling. I told you he was a prince. Yes, you did. Yes. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Polly. Have a wonderful time. We will. Good night, uh, uh, Al. Good night, sir. They say the orchestra's going to be just super. I hope that I can dance all right for you. Oh, we'll do fine. I know some new steps. I can even leave. Good. Be good. And we were worried about her. I wonder if she'd like to help me run the business. Mike, if Al's a prince, would that make Polly a princess? Make her a princess. With a queen for a mother, she was born a princess. <laughs> to the royal house of Ramsey. Yeah. And it's almost paid for. <laughs> <laughs>